Hello, everyone. It's 12 o'clock again. Oh, my gosh. Um, and it's also our weekly or bi-weekly webinar. I feel like we're just pushing out content uh, more frequently nowadays. But I think this next topic that we're going to talk about, which is navigating through your medicine cabinet, it's it's a hot one. Um, and even Monica here, who's our driver, who's taking care of my chat room, uh, she was like, oh my gosh, I need to learn because the uh, reason why I don't take vitamins is A, B, and C, which I'm going to talk about today. So I'm here with Colleen, our leader CEO at LWI, uh, as usual, also using her to really give us some real life experience as well. Um, and so just to keep it more realistic and more of a chat uh, versus a lecturing um, webinar. So I'm going to start, I'm going to get started with really the boring statistics. Um, but to me, it's not boring because it really is a reflection of what U.S. American adults are really dealing with when it comes to buying vitamins, thinking about vitamins and how to utilize vitamins for their benefit, for their health benefit. Now, we know that 75 percent of U.S. adults actually take some kind, kind of dietary supplements in one way or the other. And 55 percent of those people are actually qualified as regular users. So what does that regular user mean? It means you take it more days than not in a week um, and actually are compliant with utilizing some form of supplements or vitamins or amino acids. Now, there are 330 million people uh, in the U.S., so I'm just giving you a kind of uh, perspective on what how many people we're talking about who are on vitamins. And if you really calculate of the total population, we're talking about 250 million people who are actually taking some form of vitamins. So with that said... When there are people taking vitamins, there's a dollar sign to it. So people are actually spending as much as $150 billion a year just on dietary supplements alone. So this topic in itself is super important because in our business, we have a product offering which consists of vitamins and minerals. And we're always trying to stay uh, on, on top of the knowledge base and the indicated use for why you use what you use in our program specifically. And on average, fun fact, he, um, on average, uh, an individual could spend up to an average of 56 bucks a month just on vitamins alone. So think about this for yourself and perhaps maybe walk to your kitchen cabinet now if you're close to it and take a look at what you're really spending your money on when it comes to vitamins. Now, how many supplements are you taking on a daily basis? These are kind of questions like, for this webinar, I want you to kind of, I want it to trigger thoughts. That's all it is. And then maybe perhaps walk away today, just understanding what did I learn today? What can I do to change my behavior? And perhaps start taking some of the expensive stuff that's sitting in your cabinet right now. And are you a regular user? Or maybe you can become a regular user. And of course, or are you just a vitamin hoarder like myself? And Colleen, what do no, you think? No, I, I am a regular user. And quite frankly, I used to be a hoarder or I would buy them sporadically. But since joining the team at Lindora and at LWI, I am a 100% religious regular user and I can feel the difference. Good to know. And, you know, as the chief medical officer, you know, I do admit to the fact um, sometimes I forget. And this is probably why I would be considered more of a hoarder in that sense. So I'm going to give you a, take a glimpse of what you would see in my medicine cabinet. And I actually took some out even though it's packed with stuff. And being part of the business and the industry, I'm gonna tell you, I get free vitamins and supplements sent to me. Like even when I don't ask for it, they just send to me for recommendations on perhaps, you know, adding it onto our product line. So I get a lot of stuff, but at the end of the day, there are a few standard things that I always do take as my go-to. Now, this is what you see. This is my typical like go-to things. Um, you got a couple products from obviously uh, Lindora, which is the glucose control and a stress less. But all my, my other things that you would see on my uh, medicine cabinet would be my multivitamin as well as my super magnesium. And I'll go into details of what these things are about in my next few slides. But think about what's in your cabinet, because truly it's a reflection of what you're probably read, what you probably read about online or what a friend or family told you about. And you find yourself gravitating towards that information and probably made that purchase. And really in reality, do you even know what you're really taking? Um, so that's really what I'm trying to um, get at today. So how many vitamins are you on right now, Colleen? Um, I'm thinking that I need to be on more after looking at your medicine cabinet, <laughs> but there's five that I take regularly. All right. And I have a feeling that I'm going to talk about some of these things, but before we start there, let's uh, 
dive deep into the whole meaning of vitamins and minerals. You know, in this industry, we call these things what we call nutraceuticals. It's just a fancy word of saying supplements in our lives. But in the United States, as, as an FYI, you know, vitamins and supplements, they're not actually controlled by the FDA. But there's a lot of labeling laws and rules around it. And so it is nice to actually understand where we're we getting these stuff because it does matter. Um, and at the end of the day, dietary supplements is part of what we call nutraceuticals as well as food additives. So a lot of stuff that you read on the label, for example, in you know supplements, bags, protein powders and whatnot, it's also considered nutraceuticals. So this is just a very basic definition. Now, the indicated use for nutraceuticals really comes down to these various reasons that you see here. And when we interviewed, you know, 100 people in our business, they'll probably tell you, oh, I just want, you know, better wellness. I want to be a little bit more responsible in my health. I just want to take something so I feel better. Or I want to optimize my performance. So if you are a, a trainer or you are training for something and you go to the gym regularly, a lot of times you may find yourself taking a gamut of, uh, supplements and vitamins that would help you tailor to performance. Uh, other people are maybe trying to uh, address their issues of fatigue and, and tiredness. And again, there are things that you can take that targets these specific symptoms uh, that you may be feeling. And of course, things that you could improve your conditions on as well. Now, supplements and vitamins in our business, we never make claims. We never say, oh, take this and all of a sudden you'll cure yourself of all diseases. We do have a lot of clients with specific medical problems that we do not, uh, we do not uh, at least give them the impression that we're treating disease states. Because truly, if it is a disease state, you should be consulting a uh, medical provider, which obviously you can ask any one of our medical providers at Lindora, uh, because we are capable of telling you what could be a uh, um, medication for a specific condition. Uh, so truly embrace your vitamins and supplements as a additive, as a as adjunct to your actual treatment to disease. Now, a million dollar question mm -hmm. I always get is, well, it's about to expire or expired. I just found a jar of something that has an expiration date last year. Can I take it? Should I take it? Um, and tell you the truth, and I didn't put anything in writing because I don't want people to say, oh, Dr. Lee said this or Colleen said this at Lindora. Um, the fact is, depending on what it is in your cabinet, even though they're expired, they literally could be actually taken for up to a year post expiration day. And it comes down to your hard supplements, you know, the stuff in the tablet form, for example. A lot of times the manufacturers, when we do our R&D and putting products on our shelf, our main question is, how long can it sit on my shelf? Because truly, the duration of the time where it sits on our shelf actually tells us how long and how much inventory we have to keep. And also, if it sits on our shelf for years and years, people will question, right? And so for that reason, we already know from information from pharmaceuticals and people that makes vitamins and supplements, or at least people that put these things together, verbally, they would tell us it's actually good for a year, sometimes even up to two years post expiration date. But in our business, we don't sell anything that is expired for uh, obvious reasons, because people just don't like things that are expired on the shelf. But there's actually no law. There's no law out there that says you can't sell something that's expired. Um, but we obviously, we're very conservative. So everything you see on our shelf is always within the expiration date. Now, things that I wouldn't take uh, post expiration day or best use by day would be anything that's made of oils and liquids. So if you have these fancy capsules that are really filled up with actual oils, I definitely wouldn't go down a path of taking it, you know, one year out only because of the fragility and the fragileness of uh, oils in general. Oftentimes, even for example, fish oil or vitamin E oils, they are oil-based and they actually goes rancid even within the capsule itself. So oftentimes we get an aftertaste or you know, like a weird taste when we burp, for example. Um, so a lot of times if you wait long enough, not only is it rancid, it's probably just bad and rotten. So I would definitely shy away from anything liquids or oils in general after expiration. Probiotics, for example, would probably be another one that you probably don't wanna take after the expiration date only because of the nature of a probiotic, which I will cover a little bit at the end of the conversation. But otherwise with your vitamin C, your Bs, and anything that's hard in a tablet form, it's probably okay to take. Do you have any comments on that, Colleen? I'm definitely not taking it post expiration based on your description of oils and probiotics. 
I'm not here to scare you, but you know, these are some of the- I have been right. known to take a pill format post expiration and I'm still alive. So that's good. 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 I mean, the things that we fear about, uh, you know, taking things that are way too old really comes down to this. When it comes to your hard tablets, like your multivitamins and whatnot, the fact is, it's not like it's rotten. It's not, it's not, it hasn't gone bad to a degree where it turns into a poisonous component of your day, right? Um, it doesn't mean that you, you can still take it. It's just overall, the efficacy of that ingredient may be lower than what it was before. So really in reality, I don't mind uh, taking something that's, you know, with a, you know, 30 day, 40 day past shelf life uh, uh, deal. If it's like a hard vitamin for that very reason, because it's okay, but it doesn't, you know, if I don't get the full benefit of it by finishing the rest of the bottle, because at least in my mind, I know I'm not putting something dangerous or poisonous or toxic, you know, into the system. Now, of course, the oils and things, it's going to taste bad. It's going to, you know, you're going to burp up the, the raunchy byproduct of whatever it is um, in a capsule. So I definitely, I would think that naturally would be a, um, a hindrance to most people uh, for their uh, expired uh, vitamins. And of course, probiotics. Um, and the whole reason why I would shy away from taking expired probiotics is that the bacteria, what is supposed to be would be live bacteria. So they do dissipate and they die off. So the longer you wait, you're basically taking an empty capsule of whatever you're taking. So this is the one reason why I wouldn't take it for that reason. All right, supplement labels. And this is what we deal with, you know, when it comes to the, the distribution of vitamins and we sell ours, obviously we have them on our uh, shelves. And so therefore the expiration date by definition is super important for us. And if you come across your um uh, vitamins and supplements now in your cabinet, for example, they could use any various terminology when it comes to expiration date. You know, what we are familiar with, obviously, is expiration date. All right. Don't take it past this point. And uh, I dug a little deeper into it. Um, really, why do they use expiration versus sell by versus best buy versus use by? And there's actually little differences in the nuance of this information. And even like topicals and, and cosmetics also kind of follow the same rule. Absolutely. When it comes to expiration date, to me, it sounds like this is it. And we're usually using expiration dates for like for like things that are like dairy or meats. For example, if you go to the supermarket, you see on their label on the um, actual, you know, food, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, packaging for the meat and deli. Labels. They'll say expiration. And I think that to us should be very alarming, meaning don't go beyond that date. But when it comes to supplements and vitamins, you'll see the variation of sell by, best by, and use by, because truly you can probably take it post use by day um, with no harm. But it is nice to kind of know uh, what these terminologies are, because at the end of the day, then we are kind of empowered with education of knowing that, hey, we're not causing harm to ourselves when we're picking through our own cabinet and also try not to waste money, right? Um, so these are some of the uh, highlights on what these term terminology uh, stands for. So definitely read through it. I think they're helpful. At least it gives me a peace of mind that we're not just throwing things into the toilet. All right, so, and all right, so what do you think about when you start buying supplements? And, you know, now that we kind of got the uh, baseline information out of the way, um, so when you do buy supplements in general, these are kind of the three things that goes through my mind when I buy things uh, uh, at the store or online. Number one, route the distribution. Number two, a reputable source, meaning is this a good company? Are they sourcing from a good, you know, a manufacturer? And thirdly, of course, costs. You know, if something is uh, costing you hundreds of dollars per month and you can't barely pay your other bills, obviously there's no longevity to it and there's no point in even starting whichever supplement that you're about to take. So these three things sort of have to go hand in hand. I think it's part of kind of the decision making. Unless you have something different. No. This is how you think about things. This is how I think about it. Um, unless, you know, these companies are just sending you stuff for free and then you're just accumulating like a typical hoarder like myself. Because um, we don't want to let go. I don't want to throw away things. So let's start off with route of distribution. This is super important because it you can come across all kinds of ways to deliver a supplement into your body. 
at least nowadays. And so what we are very familiar with would be the things that you find in your cabinet, which are all oral based. Now, the key element here is bioavailability. So depending on who the you know makers are, sometimes they would actually say, hey, this oral uh, tablet or this capsule or uh, this, this powder gets delivered into your system at the most efficacious level. And this is why you should spend the extra money. So for me, it's all about just overall bio bioavailability. You know, how much of that capsule or tablet or pill or powder is actually being digested, broken down, and absorbed into our bloodstream. Um, we talk about this in our business because not only do we offer the oral tablet, the oral version, we also uh, give vitamins in injectable forms, which is uh, what we call subcutaneous delivery versus intramuscular delivery. And now we added a year and a half ago, IV hydration, which is intravenous um, therapy of getting vitamins and supplements literally into your bloodstream at 100%. So these are the percentage of what we call bioavailability, okay? So when we take an oral uh, regimen, for example, and it could be capsule, tablets, any sublingual or trochs. Trochs are something that is kind of new in terminology when it comes to something that's being compounded. Sublinguals are things that you can put in between your gums and your cheek and it dissolves into your bloodstream. And then you got your tablets and your capsules, which require actual you swallowing it. The important part about capsules and tablets is that you do have to swallow these two things because it requires the acid in your stomach to do its job to dissolve it into its active ingredient. So there's really no other way to obviously get uh, digest these capsules and, and tablets. So therefore, once it's broken down in the stomach, then it gets absorbed and your small bowel kicks in to do its job by moving that ingredient into your bloodstream. Um, versus your sublinguals and trochs uh, actually has a higher bioavailability because of the fact that it gets dissolved in your gum line, like your mucosa. So that in itself bypasses your stomach. So when you bypass the stomach, you have one less organ to lose the effect of absorption. And this is why if you were to take something sublingual versus trochs, uh, or sorry, sublingual and trochs versus tablets and capsules, the bioavailability is much higher. We actually leverage um, and utilize compound pharmacies in creating these things for that very reason. Some people just truly cannot take things orally or through a tablet. So we accommodate by uh, utilizing the skill set of a compound pharmacist to do so. Now, subcutaneous is when you inject something into the fat layer right under your skin. This is a very popular way to deliver vitamins and supplements as well. Um, obviously, a lot of people don't do it at home because, you know, people just fear needles in general. But we do it in our business because that's part of our weight loss program. And people do love that effect because they do feel effects of it right away. And oftentimes when we deliver like a B-complex or a B12 shot, they actually taste it um, um, right shortly after the inject injectable. So it means that every time your heart pumps that blood through the circulation, you are now actually getting it exposed to all the cells in your body, which is pretty awesome. Um, but the bio uh, availability for something that's delivered subcutaneously is much higher. So which is pretty awesome because now you're increasing the of uh, the availability of that active ingredient into the places it needs to be. So it is a little bit more invasive because you're putting a needle into your, through your skin, right? But your body is actually seeing more of it. Intramuscular injectables, on the other hand, it's basically when you inject it into your muscle and you're allowing, allowing it to sit in your muscle mass for the time being. And then the active ingredient then slowly dissipates into your bloodstream and the bioavailability for that is actually even higher, which is about 60 to 80%. Of course, it could be a little bit more painful and you would have to use needles. And so that's what, one of the trade-offs, you know, uh, a little bit more invasive, but yeah, you're gonna get more active ingredient into your circulation. And finally, we got intravascular infusion, which is basically something called IV hydration. I'm sure you guys probably have heard of that, but we now have nine clinics. 10 clinics at Lindora with yeah. IV hydration offering. And so if this is something you want to explore and try out, um, definitely look us up for that. 
However, what's so special about IV hydration is we do put a line in your vein um, and which then would deliver the actual bag of solution containing the active ingredient. What's also important to think about is uh, we make your bag at the moment of ordering because these vitamins, once we mix it into a bag of solution, it starts sip, uh, dissipating because this, this is what we call antioxidants. And the best thing about antioxidant is it acts really quickly in your system, but it also breaks down really quickly as well. So we only make it kind of like um, when, when ordered on the day of. And so this is also a great way to deliver almost 100% of everything we put in the bag into your body. So with that, you now see the spectrum of bioavailability on different delivery system and techniques of what you can think about that's important for you. Now, I'm presenting this only because I think most of us in the audience are probably the people that are taking the oral supplements, right? But I want you to think about, all right, what are, if I know that I'm taking my supplements on a daily basis and I am only getting about 20 to 50% of that ingredient into my system, what are other ways that I could actually optimize um, this type of therapy? And so what you can think about is uh, definitely the subcutaneous, intramuscular, as well as IV hydration that is out in the marketplace. Now, uh, we just saw a question on gummies. Great, great question. There's so many different types of gummies nowadays, but guess what? Gummies would be considered your capsules and your tablets. Why? Because you have to chew up that gummy, right? And your salivary glands, this all embedded in your cheeks, puts out something called amylase and lipase. It breaks down your gummies to a degree, and then you swallow whatever you chewed up and it has to go through your stomach once again. Personally, I don't think gummies would have a very high bioavailability in most cases, but it tastes really good. It tastes really good. And in our diet program, we we actually- <laughs> We could kick you out of ketosis. <laughs> we, we did sell gummies for a little bit, but then the net carbs wasn't adding up. So it, it was the big struggle for me where, you know, we have a products development department R&D who pushed on the gummies and I was just fighting it. I'm like, I don't know if you're going to get a net carb of two grams of net carbs from a gummy, but I could actually eat a cup of broccoli with the same net carb. For me, it was a no brainer, eat the broccoli. Um, but this is why we don't have gummies in our product line anymore because of that very reason, because we want to, you know, keep it tasty and we just couldn't figure out a way to keep it tasty and not add on to your net carbs for diet reasons. But otherwise, I think overall, if you're not in a diet, it could be a good add on to your day if it makes it easier for you to take your vitamins. All right. So that was that on bioavailability. And I think my slides are stuck for a second. Oh, there you go. Thank you. My assistant. Yeah. Happy to be of assistance. So other things we want to think about uh, when it comes to buying a supplement is the source, right? Um, are they well known to do what they do? And we have a lot of competition nowadays um, in the space of nutraceuticals and the companies are just popping up left and right. And so, you know, we see a lot of ads ourselves. That's part of our kind of market research on who's out there. Um, really, at the end of the day, I'm a big fan of knowing clinical trials. So even if you're bombarded with brands and brands, look at the key ingredient in the specific vitamins that you are being marketed to. Look at the ingredient and then Google it on PubMed. This is like the quickest and easiest thing that you can do to figure out, all right, what is the likelihood of this active ingredient doing anything for me and for what reason? So if you, for example, if you uh, came across a product that has three, three items, three different ingredients, and you know, the, the, you're not going to find any research papers on those three ingredients together, because the likelihood of that is really slim. But you, there is a lot of, there are a lot of information out in the space where you could actually look up specific information for these individual ingredients uh, for any health benefits. And they're all out there. It's all public information anyways. So that's also, uh, that's definitely one thing that I would do uh, when it comes to checking out if the company is actually good at what they do and stand by the product as well. And also remember, supplements are not FDA uh, controlled or approved. So that means you're not going to expect, you know, clinical trials where, you know, people are placed on vitamin C and to get a effect of some sort or outcome. So you, you will never find those kind of studies. 
Now, um, just one slide about really uh, how we process vitamins and things through, through our system. And this is just a quick little slide on what to think about when we pick a vitamin or supplement in general. Um, the companies that oftentimes create these combination of things oftentimes would sell you the idea of, hey, this is the active ingredient and we hold a key or the patent to the delivering system, which makes it more effective than others. You got to read into all that information. And I, this is basically my biology 101, just to give you a, a, a tip on what that, the, the journey of that vitamin and what it goes through when we take it orally. Okay. So uh, you do have to be aware that when we do take anything orally, we have to chew it up and we have enzymes in our mouths that breaks things down. So even portion of that active ingredient is probably gonna be denatured to some degree before we actually swallow it into our stomach. As it hits our stomach, it then gets broken down even more. Because the fact is our small bowel, which is the part of our GI or gastrointestinal system, this is the part where it can absorb things, but it can only absorb what we call the, the actual singular molecule, which is glucose, amino acid from a protein, and a fatty acid from fat, uh, fat tissue. So if we were chewing these things up, it has to break has to be broken down to that level of molecule for us to actually absorb. Vitamins are no different. However, through the whole process of digestion, a lot of things get broken down, denatured, and not absorbed. And that's the process of how our stomach works. And so with that said, sometimes you're going to hear a lot of medical jargons on, hey, we make a product that actually gets higher absorption than the rest. And this is reason why and how. Um, it does allow you to read up. It actually forces you to read into more of the uh, physiology of how things work. And I think the more that you are uh, educated or at least self-educated or aware of how human GI system works, then it makes more sense for you when it comes to finding that key active um, vitamin that may work for you. Now, um, this is just an example of how confusing things are. For example, magnesium. And this is something that Monica here next to us uh, really wants to hear about. You know, she's like, what's up with magnesium? Why is it all over the news? I'm like, great question. I'm going to talk about that. Um, magnesium, it's it's not a novelty um, electrolyte in our in our in our food source it's it's part of life we have magnesium in our body we take on magnesium through foods and drinks and things that we put in our mouths and it's it's around in the nature no one in the world is allergic to magnesium because without magnesium you will die you'll be dead um and so like sodium and potassium these are like three main electrolytes that that helps us operate on a daily basis. But guess what? There's a market for it because if I can actually create synthetic form of magnesium and educate you on how to use it for whatever its benefit is, then perhaps you'll be more aware of how magnesium work and how you can use it on a daily basis to you know, optimize your health in general. Now, these are the many types of magnesium that you may find in the marketplace or over a counter. And there are magnesium that I prescribe where you can't find in the uh, typical CVS or Rite Aid. Uh, the more common magnesium is up the first four on this list here. And they're all generic stuff. For example, if you look at the indicated use, there are magnesium that are specifically used as a laxative or stool softener. There are magnesium that are specifically for relaxation and sleep. So if you have insomnia or you have bad sleep at night, you probably don't want to go for magnesium citrate because if anything, you'll just find yourself going to the bathroom more. Um, the other uh, reasons would be, or the other indicated use for even chronic pain is magnesium chloride, okay? So you can actually go to CVS and those, those, they actually have a gamut of magnesiums and now you can empower yourself in picking the right magnesium for the indicated use. Um, magnesium sulfate, for example, is actually found in Epsom salt, you know, the stuff you put in your bathtub at night, or at least for me at night. Um, so that's very different from the stuff that we use for as a laxative. So be aware of that. But guess what? If you're not aware of the different types of electrolytes that are out in the marketplace, you're likely going to find yourself buying it for the wrong reason. So do some research, 
figure things out before you go shopping, or at least look at the medicine cabinet now um, and see what you have, because it might not be doing what it's supposed to do at all. Actually, I have the GI, I had the uh, magnesium uh, glycinate in my cabinet when I was pregnant, constipated. So <laughs> no longer use it, but it's, it's still in my cabinet. All right. So my recommendation uh, when it comes to supplements and, you know, I showed a picture of my uh, medicine cabinet, not because I want you to all get on multivitamin and, and things of that nature. I think it has to be uh, curated for your personal benefit. Um, otherwise, you'll be overwhelmed with just spending hours of your day taking supplements and vitamins. And sometimes it's hard to take, you know, and, and some people actually say, I don't take vitamins because it makes me feel sick to my stomach and I feel nauseous, uh, which is another Monica comment earlier. And I said, this is a great, great comment because it reminds me to talk about why people don't take vitamins. And truly, I have the same problem. I don't know if you do, Colleen, but in the morning when we take our vitamins, there are certain vitamins ingredient that causes us to want to uh, like gag gag yeah um and it comes down to iron for example uh iron on an empty stomach does cause that effect so huge recommendation eat food with it i literally take two bites of my breakfast take my multi and then finish my breakfast so i kind of like hide that vitamin within the food that i'm chewing up on so then when we're actually digesting in the stomach my stomach doesn't see it as the only thing that's there for that very reason. That's the easy way on avoiding the whole potential uh, nauseated feeling uh, when it comes to iron in your multi. Um, my recommendation really comes down to this because it is my bread and butter. We do weight management here at Lindora. So oftentimes the big question is, what should I take or focus on when I activate my weight loss um, program at Lindora and how to optimize my uh, my weight loss program in general. Um, and the fact is, you know, we do what we do at Landora because we cater all the supplements and products for the mindset of a person who is going on program, not so much uh, of everybody and everything else because it becomes really super overwhelming. So when you do buy things off our product line, it's likely because it is driven for wellness, metabolic health, and specifically weight management. So this is my list here that I would be, uh, that you should consider if you are going to activate a weight loss program or about to go on something called rapid weight loss, especially for my GLP-1 users or the semaglutide or terzeptide user. And here's why. Now, um, the list here is pretty comprehensive. It's potassium, multivitamin, capsulin, Keto-3, stressless, muscle maintain, and glucose control. It's very specific. It's very intentional. And we're going to start off with potassium. Um, when people go through what we call rapid weight loss, meaning losing two plus pounds per week consistently, and this could be from purely our weight loss program with the education and um, the accountability visit with no meds, or you can also add meds and medication to the mix and actually bump up that weight loss efficacy even higher. Anything that you lose that is over two pounds per week is considered by obesity medicine as rapid weight loss. Rapid weight loss do result in potential adverse reaction and side effects. This is why we're medically monitored. And this is also why we have to tie in an electrolyte that is super important for what we call water fluctuation or diuresis. Potassium is super important because it moves of water. If water leaves your body, potassium leaves your body. When we go through rapid weight loss using proteins, for example, and we use a high uh, amount of proteins for a regimen, a uh, variation of a ketogenic diet, what happens is when you start eating a lot more amino acids and protein forms, you will end up increasing your filtration rate of your kidneys and your kidneys will pee out more water. So when you start moving water around, potassium moves too. So you end up peeing out your potassium, not to levels of danger in any way or form, but enough where that fluctuation could cause you to have symptoms such as nausea, feeling fatigue, just feeling kind of down because you're moving things so quickly. And this is one of the adverse reaction or side effects of rapid weight loss. Most of my clients, when they are educated at this point, they understand that is a potential feeling or symptoms that they may get it becomes kind of like religious uh, religion for them. They get all the products and in, 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 like ready to go to start their day one protein day. So it's super important to find the right potassium as well. So when you go shopping for that potassium, because you know that you're about to start a, a rapid weight loss regimen, 
These are some of the common potassium that you may come across uh, at CVS, Rite Aid, uh, over the counter, okay? We used to sell potassium, but guess what? We got to a point where we we're like, you know what? Everyone sells it. Why even have it on a product line? So this is simply something that you can get over the counter at 99 milligrams twice a day. And it's all pretty standard. Um, but I do see a lot more of the potassium citrate and chloride out in the marketplace and they're cheap. They're like six bucks a bottle for a month's supply. So this is something you definitely should have in your cabinet for that very reason, especially for those who are on the uh, Wagovi and Zepbound and compounded medication as well. So Colleen, are you on the potassium? Because no. I know you're going through rapid weight loss. No, I need to get potassium. Man, I need I need a spanker. So bicarbonate or gluconate, Amy? Yep. Um, you will gluconate is something that I see a lot of times. It just depends on what your uh, typical conventional like convenience store carries. Right. So don't freak out when you see like different variation. The stuff they sell over the counter typically is for that reason. It's for replacement and dehydration. So okay. it's pretty much safe. Tomorrow I'll start on potassium. Fine. Fine. <laughs> Um, a daily multivitamin is something that I, I actually am pretty religious about because of the fact that when you're going on a what we call caloric restrictive uh, regimen, it means you are going to eat less of the foods that you are used to. So guess what? With food, there are a lot of natural vitamins and supplements that are already kind of embedded with your macronutrients. So the fact that you're cutting like portion of it out, I want to make sure that you're not losing out on the good stuff, which is the, the vitamins and, and amino acids. So this is why a multi as an insurance, I think for me is why I would take one um, to really truly just make sure that you're not losing any of the trace minerals, for example, um, because of caloric deficit. All right, next item is Capsulin. I'm pretty passionate My about- My favorite. It. I know it's her favorite. <laughs> um, I mean, she started, Colleen started with us a year ago and literally she's like, all right, everything's free here basically for me. So what is the like one top product that's been like the best seller at Lindora? And I said, just take this. And I'm not documenting this, but I told her, and you can take three times the amount because I used to do research on this product. Anyway, so Capsulin, let me tell you a little bit about that. Capsulin is our name for the active ingredient known as dihydrocapsiate. Dihydrocapsiate is the ingredient that is derived from this novelty pepper that they grew in Thailand um, for years and years. So this Japanese group, um, who's a food supplement manufacturer in Japan, they figure out that if we can isolate this one little active ingredient from the sweet chili pepper um, and actually concentrate it into a capsule form, then it could potentially do things with, or at least have outcomes for health benefits. And they did a lot of clinical trials. So if you actually Googled dihydrocapsiate with Ajinomoto, which is the brand of the, the manufacturer of this active ingredient, you'll find all these clinical trials that not only does it improve weight loss, but there are cancer cell um, mitigation and, and and also improvement, cardiovascular health, and also anti-aging. Lots of lots of information on this very specific ingredient. I love it because I guess 16 years ago, I also ran a clinical trial uh, uh, at UCLA when I was a fellow. And I was it was a double-blinded study. I didn't know what supplement I was working with. It was double-blinded, meaning I wasn't aware of what the ingredient was. And the person who was taking the supplement wasn't aware of what it was. And we're both just kind of unaware of what we're doing. However, we know we're not going to cause harm in any way or form. So what I did was in this clinical trial, we put 40 different people on, on the same protein regimen that we now follow at Lindora. A portion of them were on a dummy pill, placebo will, pill. A portion of them were on a small dose of capsule, capsulin or dihydrocapsia. And the other portion of folks were on high dose, which is nine milligram, which is what uh, uh, is recommended as of now uh, on the hydrocapsiate. And what they did was they follow through a 12 week weight loss program by drinking literally liquid protein shakes. We did the body composition, we did the blood work, we traced their, uh, we calculated their RQ factor, which is basically a, a, a ratio that tells me if the client is burning carbohydrate calories, protein calories or fat calories. We put them through body composition measurements as well. And we just tracked them for about three months. And the outcome actually came back pretty, um, it wasn't surprising to me because I kind of knew what 
what um, these supplements nowadays should be doing. Because if you're in a weight loss program, you should be taking a supplement that's going to protect your body from excessive muscle loss. And sure enough, it proven that point. You know, we wrote up the paper and we actually presented it or I presented it at a liver conference to, you know, basically talk about what my results were. And what we found was when you're on a high protein regimen under what we call rapid weight loss regimen, the weight that you end up losing while you're on a small dose versus a high dose versus no dose comes down to this. You will actually get protection of losing muscle mass when you take capsulin. Fact number one. Two. When you take a small dose versus a high dose, you're still going to protect your muscle, but at a higher dose at nine milligrams, you get added benefit of added protection. And it tells your body to burn fat more specifically and targets what kind of weight you're actually losing versus just overall muscle weight and fat weight. Um, and overall, there's the antioxidant factor as well that we know that this is also what we call kind of superfood, uh, super antioxidant. And so this also protects you from overall inflammation. So these are all great information. Now, there are other data, uh, obviously, that is weight loss specific for this supplement. One of the exciting things that I know, or at least I dug up uh, back in the day, was that it does help you lose or at least burn an additional 50 to 100 calories per day. Now, the question is, all right, for a normal consumer, you know, what does is, what is 50 to 100 calories really mean? And I think for those people that are just taking supplements for wellness, it might not be very meaningful to you for, you know, burning an extra 50 calories or 100 calories a day. However, if you are a dieter and you're going through a very restricted caloric intake regimen and you're eating maybe, you know, 1100 calories or 1200 calories, then 100 calories of extra deficit by using a capsule like dihydrocapsulate would be very meaningful. If you kept a deficit of 100 calories per day and times that by 30 days, that actually translates to about 3,000 calories a month. Simple math, right? 3,000 calories a month, what does that mean? So in nutrition science, it actually is equivalent to one pound of fat weight that you're actually potentially losing in addition to everything else that you're doing. So this is very meaningful for the mindset of a dieter. Uh, and this is why we have it on our product shelf and it has been our biggest seller since 2009 when this product was introduced uh, to Lindora uh, back in the day. And so it remains our number one seller for that very reason. And people do keep coming back to buy more to keep up with their ongoing regimen. So this is why I'm excited about this. I also sent you the link. Uh, you see the link here. You can literally Google and see what I wrote about uh, back in the day, many years ago in my studies. I'm just going to add that Dr. Lee mentioned it. The indicated use on the label is three capsules a day. But the second she told me that I could take up to three times that, so nine capsules a day, I began taking nine capsules a day. It's been about nine months now that I've been taking nine capsules a day. And as I've been on my own journey, the combination of this and muscle maintain, which I'm assuming you'll talk about, um, I've lost significant weight and I've gained lean muscle mass. Yep. So I'm a true, true believer in the power of these products because personally I've experienced it. Yep. Yep. And I, I, I follow her closely. I figured, you know what? I see her <laughs> almost every day here in corporate, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen. Um, but the fact is I only gave her the okay to take three times the amount because there are other studies and clinical trials that points to overall wellness, anti-cancer and anti-aging benefits. And that's why. Otherwise, she's not purely taking three times as much just for fun. Yes, exactly. Correct. Thanks, Dr. Lee. Deborah um, raised her hand. I believe she might have a question. Um, I can allow her to talk. Or she can put it in the chat, either yeah. one. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Let's have her put it in the chat and then we'll come back and answer it. I just want to make sure we have enough time. Oh my gosh. I'm always behind on my talks and I get tangent. Sorry guys. All right. Keto three, keto three is our next uh, product. It's actually our kind of spotlighted product uh, that we came up with during COVID uh, because the fact was everyone's freaked out with COVID. They're like, Oh, what are we going to do during our diet? That's also like helpful for our, our immune system. And the fact was, you know, at that time, apple cider vinegar was hot. We had it in the gummy form, but I couldn't figure out how to get gummy form and you know meet everyone's net carb requirement. So we put it all in the capsule, but we also added turmeric and fenugreek. Fenugreek is actually a really nice uh, 
herb, I guess, um, where we use it in Asian cooking a lot. But if you actually eaten fenugreek, it's very pungent, it's very strong. But guess what? It's in a capsule now. You don't have to like figure that out. Um, and fenugreek is actually well known to stabilize one's sugar if you take consistently good levels of it on a daily basis. So it does have that effect. What is the benefit of stabilizing your sugar? Well, it means that you don't have ups and downs. When you have downs, that's when your body tells you you need food and you're hungry. So this is why you, you want to take things that keeps your sugar stable so it doesn't trigger you into, into urges and cravings in general. This is the whole concept behind stabilization of sugars. And then turmeric is a antioxidant. It's one of those, it's that orange powder that you see that you can actually sprinkle on your foods. But turmeric can also be taken in capsule forms. And you see a lot of products out in the space as well. We made a, an effort to combine all these three because instead of having to take turmeric, fenugreek, and apple cider vinegar all separately, you can now just take it all in one capsule. And the amount of it is actually uh, high enough as a good baseline amount. Can you have more of these three ingredients outside of that? Like maybe perhaps put turmeric in your food? Absolutely. There's no harm in that. But we always want you to be set up with like the basic foundation. Specifically in uh, cases when someone is going through rapid weight loss, this is a great anti-inflammatory regimen to really help you draw down that inflammation that you're about to go through. Weight loss in general, the process of it actually could be inflammatory for some people. And here's how, because you're basically shrinking down your fat tissue. You're telling your body to like, go ahead and break down those fat tissue to provide fuel for you to operate throughout the day. And physiologically, your body senses that as stress because you're going out of your way to break down fat. But guess what? This is a product we specifically created to counteract that for that very reason. I take two a day. Mm -hmm. It's the recommended daily use, two a day. Deborah submitted her question for Capsule Lynn. She says if you have to take it on an empty stomach for it to be effective. Oh, thank you, Deborah. So she must be one of our clients. Um, that's the recommendation, um, but truly, I think some people, for me, what's more important uh, on top of that very fact is that you take it consistently every day as well, same time of the day. So you have that 24 hour bioavailability. Uh, next product I really like is Stress Less, and I don't think we we don't stress enough of it. <laughs> um, but the fact is our body goes through stress, even when we're dieting, like I just mentioned, is a stressful process. So you got to find ways to really decrease that stress. One of the most natural and free way to decrease your stress is called sleep. We'll talk about that later. Um, but you can also, also take supplements. And we curated these ingredients, these active ingredients into one capsule because these are ingredients that are well known to help you optimize and target the specific receptors in your brain and your body that helps with relaxation. I always wanna stress on relaxation. Just because you take stress less doesn't mean all of a sudden all your problems go away and you get sleepy. It's not that. It's all about telling your cells and your body to relax and not go into overdrive. When you go into overdrive, that's when it tells your body or your stress organ known as adrenal glands to rev up what we call cortisol. So these are some of this act active ingredients that could actually calm your body down so you don't trigger stress hormones to be secreted. And um, some of the things with the little stars is what we call adaptogens, which are basically natural substances found in plants or herbs and whatnot that actually helps the body deal with stress and inflammation. You'll see that terminology a lot in the uh, nutraceutical world, and that's what it means. So when you see things are, oh, this is adaptogen, then it means stress, um, stress adaptation. Muscle Maintain is actually one of my favorites. Um, we actually created this product because of all the noise that we're getting from clients who are losing more muscle mass than anticipated. Um, and that was way before even GLP ones came in the marketplace. Remember, our nutrition program falls under the practice of what we call rapid weight loss. Therefore, you would be at risk for losing more muscle mass than fat if you don't do it correctly. So besides eating other proteins and doing a resistant training and sleeping better, you can take supplements to actually help your body keep up with your amino acids to specifically protect your muscles from being lost in the process. Now, um, branched chain amino acids is BCAAs. You probably see that terminology a lot as well. Branched chain amino acids are specifically three, these three amino acids of all the 20 amino acids. Of the 20 amino acids that are found in natural animal products, nine are considered what we call essential. Of those nine essentials, three 
are from that nine. So it means our body does not make leucine, isoleucine, or valine. You have to take that in a supplement form or you have to eat it from an animal product. But guess what? If you are keeping a deficit on your caloric intake by going through our protein day and going through rapid weight loss, then you're likely not eating the amount that you were eating before. So we want to make sure your body is at least housed or protected um, with the active ingredient of these amino acids for that very reason. Otherwise, the supplement is also, also made up of creatine, glutamine, arginine, and citrulline. These are other amino acids that promote blood flow, like arginine actually increases blood flow to the places that needs it most, which is in muscle mass. Creatine is actually another type of amino acid that helps with really targeting muscle rebuild and maintenance. And these are all important things. Obviously, it's in the name. Glucose control um, is a one of our uh, one of our four newer lines of supplements as well. Um, sometimes I feel like our clients feel like, hey, I don't have I don't have sugar problems, so I don't need glucose control. But remember earlier when I said it's all about keeping your sugar balanced. This is the way you can keep yourself from having cravings. So see it that way. It's an appetite suppressant or appetite control. This is why you're taking glucose control while you're doing rapid weight loss, because you are going to feel hunger and cravings because you're dropping caloric intake. Um, also, the active ingredient, ingredient here is alpha lipoic acid, which is one of the newer supplements in the marketplace and not a lot of people know about. We actually created an IV therapy bag from alpha lipoic acid, and it's like going crazy, like selling. Like So here's a fun fact I haven't even told you. I did a IV uh, two days ago with alpha lipoic acid, we call it our fat burner IV. And the nurse who administered it was like, weigh yourself right now and weigh yourself in two days from now. Literally, I dropped two pounds. Nothing else changed, but I dropped two pounds, which for me is meaningful because I've been a little bit at a plateau. And so I feel like it was just that jump start that I needed to push me through that plateau. Well, jump start. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think sometimes like, and you, you know, it's not like Colleen gets IV hydration every day. No, but when she I dies, haven't had one since December 20th. Yeah. And, yeah. She, and she loves it. I know she does. Um, and, and, you know, she was also the driver of bringing this IV therapy into our suite of services. Um, but it's one of those things where when your body doesn't see it too often, the moment you get it, you may feel that like a, like immediate effects of it really quickly. And alpha lipoic acid is one of those things where it does wake your cell up. This is how I explain to people what, what it all is. Um, when you do uh, start taking it and there, there's oral versions of it, but tell you the truth, the best way is really inject this stuff into your body uh, because now your bioavailability is way higher and you're really getting the bang for your buck. Um, it also wakes you up your cells up. And in the cell, you kind of have to think of your cells like a battery. And, in, you know, we talk about things like mitochondria, which is the battery of a cell. The fact is when you take things that triggers the activation of your battery life, you will feel the effects of energy as one of the most common kind of um, side effects of it, not in a bad way. Um, but for me, it's all about taking something that is consistently there and then going in for the kind of jumpstart aspect of it, which is the IV hydration or the IM um, delivery of this very ingredient. Other things in this uh, bottle of supplements also consist of things that are very driven. It has a lot of nutrition data, specifically on sugar control. Chromium, for example, is a very common trace mineral. You probably have it in your multivitamin, but some people just don't take, in, take it consistently or even know anything about it. But if you do take chromium on a daily basis, it does help you drive the chemical pathways that specifically relates to sugar control. And big fan of that. Now, uh, other things on in this bottle, what I want to mention or give a little shout out is bitter melon. I don't know anyone in this audience actually eats bitter melon. I do. And it's not good. My husband hates it. He's like, what is this stuff? Um, but I do eat it. And I think it's a very uh, common uh, food product in the Indian um, cuisine as well, as well as Chinese. But the fact is we don't get enough bitter melon. You can't buy it at Ralph's or, you know, CV or uh, Safeway. Therefore, you took it in the supplement form. And there's a lot of uh, data on specifically how bitter melon actually does stabilize sugars as well. And there, a lot of people actually use it on a daily basis just to keep their sugars under control as diabetics. Um, the last item here on this list is bacillus coagulans. Um, it's a long word that basically is a reflection of a probiotic, which is live bacteria in your gut that specifically targets um, processing sugars. 
There are a lot of probiotics in our body. We specifically picked this strain because to me, it makes total sense. Put it in the bottle that has anything to do with sugar control and cravings. And this is why you see it here. Which then brings me to the next slide. A lot of questions on probiotics. Like, I have probiotic. It's old. I don't know what to do with it. Uh, like I said earlier, if it's expired, probably probiotic, you're not going to get much out of it. But sure, you can take it, but it's not going to be harmful for you. But just a little glimpse of what probiotics are about. It is a live bacteria um, that is found in your system. You can take it in food form as well as supplement form. Personally, if you can eat it through food, I think that's the best way to get it because this is what's compatible with life. And your body is used to things like yogurt and sauerkraut. Um, I, I don't know. I'm used to miso, maybe not Colleen, um, but you know things that you can actually buy at the store that's packed with probiotic, like kombucha teas. Those are packed with probiotics. But Dr. Lee, if you really struggle with eating it, like I really struggle with every single thing that's on this piece of paper. <laughs> that's true. She is one of the pickiest eaters that I've known. But um, I want the benefit of it. So what do I do? The Definitely the probiotic supplement would be your best bet. But when it comes down to buying a really good probiotic, it's all about the company itself. I only really work with companies that specifically like that's all they make. That's all they manufacture. And specifically various strains. So I'm going back to this back, one slide here. The most common strains that are considered um, beneficial are these ones here that you see, lactobacillus, bifidobacterium. Um, and so, but you'll see it all on the jar. They'll tell you how many billions of forming colonies that you are getting from this one little capsule from a brand. Specifically, if it hits most of these words here, then you're pretty much uh, safe. But otherwise you will see more novelty strains like bacillus coagulans which is specifically, you know, uh, targets metabolism. Um, but these are things that obviously we do in our business. And then that's it. And that's it. And Monica's like, you're out of time. Um, we always run out of time. I feel like we should make these webinars like two hours long. Or No, that's too long. Nobody has two hours at their lunch break. <laughs> but I do want to end it with... Um, uh, uh, at least me thanking you for spending another hour with us. Um, and also just all our webinars are catered really to what we are offering as well uh, in our business. Obviously, I don't want to overwhelm you with everything about Landora, but for those who attended today because you took your time out uh, to spend an hour with us, we want to make sure that you are aware that we do have promotion at what, 20% 20 off? 20% off right now, yeah. Yeah, for four things. Stay weight, muscle maintain, glucose control, and stress less. That is, uh, we, it's back in inventory. All One, in inventory. Right? We've been going through it so quickly, but we're fully stocked. And we wanted to say thank you so much for being loyal to Ladora, Also for learning more about supplements in general and how they can support you and your health and your longevity. So if you're near local Lindora, go in and take advantage. Thank you very much. Bye everyone.